can see that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, I want to get the drone out. Yeah, I, I mean, can, you will. So. Yeah. so what have you been working on the on the lower sections? Yeah. So I basically started from the bottom. Oh no, I didn't. Sorry, I started from up here, building um, a new way to get up the hill. Once you like to get up to this point, like you'd normally come up the up this road, but it's it's so steep. It's steep. And and it's if there's any bit on the hill, it's the battery killer. It always surprised me that you could get the trailers on some of those sections. I know. Well, <laughs> you know that's how good Land Rovers are that they can do that, but also. You know, the wear and tear on them, yeah. dragging that much weight up something so steep is, you know, is not ideal. And like you say, with e-bikes, it would knack at the battery just doing laps of that. Yeah. If you come, like going back to my bike, you know, everyone, every bit <laughs> newer bike is going to be more economical. But if I come here and ride top to bottom, I get about three, four runs. Yeah. You know, like which is if I drove to Wales for a day, and you got only got three or four runs, you're like that shit. <laughs> You'd be a bit disappointed, that's, didn't that's you? That shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and um, we worked <laughs> out that obviously it's this. Yeah. That what does the battery is steepness and continue continuous steepness. Sure. So that like, little bit, but like that from the bottom straight up to that gate is. You know, that's the bit that the does killer. it. Once you get up past there and it mellows off a bit, like we're, when we were at the top mm. riding, say, that first section of the fire road, okay. uh, free ride down to the that gate and then back up that road. That road, it, fair enough, it's still quite steep, but it's mm. not as steep as this, mm. and it doesn't eat the battery as much. So the first thing we were like, how can we... Is there a way we can make an easier way to get up to this point? And like, obviously, there's never going to be a flat way because from here to <laughs> <laughs> to the sheds at the bottom, it's we're 120 meters Is higher. It really? Wow. Yeah. So in a relatively short space of time, yeah. you've got to like gain that height. That's steep. So I basically worked out where the mellowest way we could do that, and then yeah dug a, dug a track down to it and so what were the biggest problems that you've had putting a trail in on this steep section of hill just weather yeah the weather weather's been awful has it been washed away in places there's a, there's a few bits that because there's so much because because it's so steep in some bits i'm dig like if you're digging into a real steep bit of hill you're bench cutting into it aren't yeah, you yeah and to gain that much for the digger to sit on, you're gonna have to dig vertically down more. Mm. So you'd go into that at the bottom or something like this. Inevitably, at points you're gonna hit water. Yeah. So there's a few bits along that that water started coming out of the bank and not just a bit, like near enough a fucking river. <sighs> and adding to that, doing it in winter just yeah. made it an absolute pain in the ass but you kind of get stuff traveling in the right place i do need to go back down it at some point and just like give it one more once over um how much solid rock do you end up encountering in, the, in those environments when you go that deep tons is it just full of loads of it i had to like you'll see we'll ride up it in a bit yeah. um but there's like one bit of go past the quarry entrance. So I'm coming down the hill. And there's there's basically like a maybe like fifteen foot straight rock cliff, and then the mine entrance in here. Yeah. And I've got to like dig this cliff down <laughs> to then fill in the because it's just vertical yeah. down, and then there's a big bog in front of us. Yeah. So I've got to like drop it down enough that then I could fill in front of us to then make it a decent slope, if you know what I mean. So and the the main problems with digging that was I mean but there are I think there is a YouTube video about it. It's just the water. I did see you yeah, I saw one. There was like I had to I had to cross like a, a full on water course, which has been having water running down this hill for ever, basically. So, you know, it gets held in like the rockier areas you know like one side there'll be solid rock the other side will be solid rock so the water then gets forced down that channel 
which then makes that channel into like a bog Whoa. because it's had water going through it forever. So then you've got to dig out that bog, get rid of all that shit, and then back f find something semi-solid mm. to then get rock from somewhere else to then put on there to then, you know. Don't really, can't sympathise with those people that perhaps do get nervous on those smaller jumps. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm one of them. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just pushing my own here back. <laughs> no. um, <laughs> I'll look the other way. I mean, like, I don't know if you if if you look through, like, the, a lot of the trail builders, a lot of them, they like they're way better at riding than I am. Sure. I've got no. I, I'm an. I can ride a bike. I'm half decent, but I'm not. I'm. I'm more like the average rider. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not. And especially now, I'm 47, you know what I mean? I'm not interested in, like, progressing, to be honest. Well, you don't bounce quite I don't well need anymore, to. Either. I don't really need to progress as a rider anymore, yeah. mate. I just like riding my bike. Yeah. I've never been competitive. I've never been biking. I've never, like... I just like riding my bike, and I like riding my bike with my mates. Mm. And But a lot of the, tra uh, a lot of the you know, the well-known trailbuilders are a lot way more better at riding yeah so you know they're gonna make they probably do find it harder to get into that lower grade of building mindset yeah. because they're all so good if you know what i mean yeah whereas it's probably easier for me because <laughs> i'm not like them lot if you know what i mean so i don't know you know, you could look at it on the other other end of the scale. It's like, well, hang on, if he doesn't ride, if he's not going to go and ride big drums, yeah, how do you know how to build? Why them? is he making them? Yeah, which is completely fair enough, and I could see why many people could think that, and that, that's all right. But I've built enough shit now, yeah, that and spent enough time with a lot of good riders. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm I have no issue me on asking what people think sure. I'm a firm believer on feedback yeah yeah and like when we've built a lot of stuff on this hill yeah fair enough it's me who comes up with the idea and where it's going to go and what it's going to be but if we're going to build something and I'm stood next to some dudes who build trails with us yeah. I'd be an absolute idiot not to ask them what they think sure yeah and if you ask someone who's way better if say we're building something bigger you go. And, I go and ask Cade or Chaos or someone like that. You know, what do you reckon? You you listen to them. Mm. You know, like them kind of people have obviously ridden way more stuff yeah. from way more places yeah. to a way, way, way higher standard. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And I've done that since day day one. I've talked to people and mm. been around them. And you know, I used to ride bigger stuff when a few years ago. So. And once you've done it a few times, you know, don't you? It it's like like this free ride now. I've just built the whole thing without without even really getting out of the machine. I've not even like double checked. I've not even gone to go and look mm. whether it's going to work mm. because nine times out of ten now it's going to work because I've built enough shit. You know. Yeah. You know. Also, I, I'm. I'm still a firm believer of that, like, like saying that bit, that section I've built now. Like I said, I've just gone and done it. I've not really double checked anything. I've gone through it. I could go and ride that on my bike, and I'll almost certainly go. You can make that bit better. Okay. Same with anything you ever do. Yeah. You can't. I, I think it's impossible to like build something ride it and then go i can't actually make that better yeah or that bit oh, i wish i'd change that bit or something like that it's just that it's that natural like you're never going to get everything as good as it possibly can be first time you get everything pretty much bang on mm. but it can always be everything can always be improved you know you learn you, you put that much time into anything anything you get good at it yeah. don't you yeah you know and it's adding the commitment and whatever's wrong with me to make me <laughs> dig so much, you know, you're gonna you're gonna do all right, aren't you? 
And I and I firmly believe, like I honestly believe, I spent a lot of time in my life, like everyone does, going, "What the fuck am I doing? Yeah. What am I on this planet for?" Like, I spent most of my life doing that, and as soon as I got here, I'm like, "This is." I just knew it. How cool is that? I'm like, this is what I was literally meant to do with yeah. life. I was supposed supposed to build bike trails. I, I love it. I absolutely love doing it. And hate it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't love something without hating it. No, of course. Points, can you? So, yeah. do you know what I mean? I firmly believe this is what I, what I was here for, whether it's on this hill specifically or anywhere. Mm. Mm. You know, I found the one thing that I feel like I'm half, half good at, if you know what I mean. It's so hard to find your purpose, but when you do, and also, in your case, you get feedback... So you get people going like this was awesome. I had such a good day. Like yeah. you actually get that kind of consumer feedback from what you do. Which, yeah, that must be nice as well. Yeah, I mean it's it's always it's, I mean it's always been nice to hear it, all that, but it's quite weird. I've I've quite often felt so like removed from it. Okay. I've been so like swallowed by this place that it's. I've almost lived a life like nothing else exists. Yeah, sure. Well, in this little you know valley, I mean? you can imagine. Like, like nothing, really. And I've never been one to, like, look into stuff. Like, I've never, like, really looked online about what goes on, what people think. It's very hard. It's ve been very easy for me not to know what this place has meant to people. Yeah. Because it's just... <laughs> Like I say, I'm just so swallowed up by it. You just can't see anything. So, but you get them glimpses every so often of what what it meant to people, oh, and especially when shutting down. You know, you know some of the messages we got, and you know we got hundreds and hundreds of messages from people, and it, that was finally time actually. Like, fucking hell! Hmm. Like, it's not just digging on that hill it actually meant a lot to people and, absolutely and like what they use this place for you know it was always i don't know blokes need somewhere to unwind <laughs> unwind and just be a bloke yeah yeah you know there's not and enough be away to... from everything else and have their own little time just to not worry about anything mm. and that like what I do for fish, like I go fishing now to do that. Go there, have my time, come back a better person. Yeah. You know, and I believe that this was used by a lot of people for that. Even the right. even the inspiration for girls as well, like to have Pharaoh put her name to the yeah. vision line and to have kind of a, a girl as the the pin up for a, a line. I mean, that's that's you know. I'm saying blokes, aren't I? Everyone used this place, didn't yeah. they? You know, there's. You go back 10 years when we started, and I'm sure there was lots of women and girls riding. I'm sure there were, but we didn't see that many. No. But now, like, there's loads of them. Have you been to Whistler? Yeah, I haven't, no. Like, I've been to Whistler a few times. The last time I went to Whistler, it's like there's been an explosion of. Of girls and women riding there. Really? Wow. There's so many of them. I that's don't know whether amazing. that's normal. Yeah. Or it is. It's certainly normal now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, when you've got people like Vero, she's so good at doing her own thing. Yeah. And creating something. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? She when she first came here, when I got to know her on the vision line, you know, she turned up. She got an idea what she wanted to do. You know, and everyone knows what happened. Yeah, like... But back to a, like a grassroots level as well. Like you've got you've got girls that are looking at that. They're seeing other girls doing it, and it makes it a less intimidating yeah. environment as well. Like yeah. a, an uplift can be quite intimidating to people because you know it's there's a load of guys just like lugging their bikes on trailers with their full face helmets and their body armor, and quite often I think some people don't feel that welcome in that environment. So to see other people doing it, it makes you go, oh yeah. Maybe I think, okay. I'd like to think that now it wasn't like that. Yeah. Like, it was more inclusive now. But going back to, like, you know, a few years ago, I certainly remember one at first uplifts I went on, I didn't feel very included in no. it. No, I, like, turned up in bodies, mate, with some shit pads on. Yeah. Everyone's in full, like, the keen 
body suits with full <laughs> armor, and me and my mate are like, we're gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And like, just felt really out of place. Yeah. But you know, times move on, don't yeah. they? And I, you know, I feel like, you know, it's not, it's not really just a man's spot anymore, is it? Should we um, move a bit further down? Yeah. I'll um. I'll... Go to the digger. Yeah. I'll go down to there. I thought we'd just follow on from you showing me the hill and showing the work you've done. Yeah. And just take a step back to when you first found out what was going to happen here with the felling. Like, I know how it feels to have my local trail felled. And I mean, that isn't my business. That's just somewhere that I like to go and dig trails and ride with my friends. But for you, it was your entire livelihood that was sort of chopped down in yeah. one swoop. Like, so how did that feel when you found that out? Yeah, I mean, it weren't just my livelihood, it was my life, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Um, it, I think anyone can imagine it was like the one of the worst things that's happened to me yeah. in my life. And yeah, it's terrible, literally terrible. It, like the worst thing that could possibly happen at that time like we'd worked so long to get to a point that it was like worthwhile mm. and we'd we'd been at that point i feel like for a couple of years i mean obviously corona come round and at the worst possible time um and then yeah every everything it could not have been at a worse time and did you have visions of it never coming back or did you feel like right immediately we're going to rebuild we'll find a way back yeah i mean honestly after we the last few months of it being open was uh, like not nice no. like for a variety of reasons which it's not worth really getting into but it, it you know the i feel like the bike park ended on a semi high you know what I mean? We were busy, everyone come, you know, they had a good time. But personally, it was not not cool <laughs> at all. Um, and then, you know, like the 2nd of January, I think, our last day. Okay. So 3rd of January, it's, it's over, mate. Yeah. It's over. And yeah, <laughs> on yeah, I really, really had some rough time after that, and then, to be honest with you. <laughs> and then, where did that rebuild process start? Like, at what point did you get it in your mind that, that this is what we're going to do? Not not too long ago, to be really? fair. Really? Was it really? Yeah, it was, you know, like, what, I've been doing this five weeks, dig in five weeks, six or six weeks in that big machine, a week before that, <laughs> I'd say. Was it really? It yeah. Wow. Like, up until that point, it was like, we don't we didn't know what was going to happen no. we didn't know whether we were going to put any shovels in ground here ever again um you know we did we just didn't know you know we sh we shut down and it left like you know the aftermath of the place everyone's gone no one's here we know how much money we've took we know how much money's going to go out yeah that's like we said earlier that was not cool no, <laughs> at no. all and it and it left us with nothing it literally left us with nothing so i was left on this hill with obviously f worrying financially how we we're gonna survive not just the business but myself personally and my, you know and my missus sash used to work full time for this place so we lost two wages overnight yeah. um yeah. So that was a big worry. So 18 months later, is it? Roughly? Yeah. And here we are with what feels like it's getting close to a functioning bike park again. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's getting back to a riding venue. Yeah. I'd say. We've, we've I don't, I try not to look at it how, I'm trying not now because I've almost built my bridge about what's happened and mm. you know life moves on i'm trying to m get into that process of restarting yeah and um you know we're not this is not going to be like it were it's not going to be a full-on bike park 
like it was. You know, I, I used. To, <laughs> I think the best way of summing it up is, I feel like we used to be in Premier, like in football, we used to be mid-table in Premiership. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just we're never going to go out at Premiership. We're there. We're never probably. There's probably going to be places that come along that'll be better yeah. and stuff. But we're going to be there. Now we're not. We're like. You know, re being relegated for, for, to like the conference, conference league, probably below <laughs> that. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, so we've got to start from that level. I don't. I'm not so sure well, it will be that, that way. That's that's how I look at it, and okay. I feel like you know, there's many bad points of getting thrown out of the Premiership, say, but also. You know, it gives you a time to reset and yeah. look at things. And like, you know, the long-term plan we're working on for this, the long-term goal is to come back bigger and better and more sustainable than where we were. Yeah. Like, at some, like even if this hadn't happened, and same with any forest, that's commercial a commercial woodland. At some point, you know, fair enough, you're in there, you're riding your bikes, you're loving it. At some point, they're coming in to knock them trees down. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's a year, 20 years or something. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. So we're trying to create something here with this forest now that that will not happen. Sure. So then, like, this place has been thought about specifically to be a bike park. Yeah. You know, so how we've planted the trees, how we've done everything. It's so to give us the best opportunity to make something even better long term that can be here forever. And, you know, this is the very start of that process. One th thing that feels really, like, opportune in terms of the growth of e-bikes and what's happened at the bike park, yeah. it seems to have coincided at the perfect time that a lot of people are now seeing e-bikes as a viable alternative. And suddenly you've got no, yourself I, a pedal-up track. I, I agree, totally. I mean, yeah. how, how many years have people said to you, will there ever be an option to pedal up? My, f probably since day one yeah. and I've always said no way yeah. we're not doing that we, didn't, we weren't that venue we weren't looking at it that way but things change don't they sure and I think you know if I go back to when I first got my e-bike like four years ago or whatever I remember getting it riding it around all these hills and I remember like coming up up here to come and ride one, one evening and I remember riding to the top of the hill and I'm like I'm probably going to get three four runs yeah and i'm at that point i'm like these aren't viable these are not viable to like really to take over places like this sure and they're never going to be land rovers and stuff like that if that's what you're looking for mm. but like with the bikes now you can come here and have a or anywhere and get a lot of riding i i, I think you can base how good your day's riding in is at the end of the day is do you want to do any more yeah yeah you know to start with on the with with my e-bike doing full laps you guarantee you do three four laps you want to do more oh you do yeah you want to do more but do go on session bits it takes that out takes them that lot them long climbs yeah. out and you start being able to increase the amount of riding you can actually do and honestly, I can ride at the top of that hill for like an hour and a half, and I'm nearly like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Because <laughs> yeah. it, it's just that volume of riding. And like like we're saying, the e-bikes e have come on so much yeah. that they're giving you more and more and more. So there's, there's an area f f that like places could be sp sp almost specific for e-bikes. Yeah, sure. But they're never, I, I can't see that they're ever going to take over mm. if you know what i mean because you're always going to have lifts mm. you're always going to have uplifts and stuff and it but it's a different kind of riding i yeah. think you know if you think about what you would say do on a day here on an e-bike and then go and say what you would have done on an uplift day before that day of riding is completely different it's very different it's a very different kind of day of riding so i mean what you'd already said before about the the 
sessioning mentality and almost breaking the park down into sections yeah. you've got the upper then the middle and then hopefully eventually the lower section yeah. that people can then focus on certain aspects of their riding and yeah. just lap those those parts and already today i mean i've just done about an hour's riding up there and we've just been lapping the top section it's crazy how much you do isn't it? yeah really so good yeah and and i can really see people doing that here and this place lends itself to it. And also you haven't got that guilt of the fact that you've paid for an uplift yeah. and then you feel like you're not making the most of it. Yeah. Like, you know. There's gonna be slightly longer hours, opening hours. Okay, what are the opening hours gonna be? I think be? it's nine till five it's gonna nice. be. So Excellent. it's an extra hour either side. That's amazing. You know, maybe we'll chuck in some eat. I mean, honestly, up there in the evening when yeah. the sun's setting down there, it's beautiful. I bet. It's an amazing bit, place to be. Obviously, if it were raining and windy, it's not going to be like that kind of thing. But, you know, there's there's opportunities here to well, still have a good time, I feel. We've spoken about, like, obviously you had your partnership with Canyon here before. Yeah. And sort of maybe the potential for partnerships in the future. I can see bikes specifically built for this place i mean the the idea of a downhill e-bike surely is like the ultimate well, think, bike for here no uh, yeah i mean like if i if, if i'm gonna get a new e-bike i'm specifically looking for a mullet yeah longer travel it doesn't have to, i probably wouldn't want triple crowns on the front because some of them used to do that i don't know whether they still do but you know probably the third fox 38s on the front Mullet, as big as battery as possible. I'd probably personally want to go for Bosch motor because I feel like from what I've seen from people's mates basically I've been riding with, they seem to be the most bang for the buck. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's gonna do you. And you also said that you've got some events that are booked in for this summer, just to give yeah. you a kick up the ass. Yeah, so, <laughs> so um, yeah, we've got a few, a few smaller events like so first thing that comes around is um i think it's in end of june 22nd of june something okay. like that Far, one of the farmer john they do the stockport world series yep so we're, we're doing one of their rounds this this um this summer nice so there's i think there's about 200 plus booked on so that's going to be on this red trail just from this first fire road down because yep. they're all push-ups which is, you know, why it kind of works well for us yeah, sure. to do one. So, and um, yeah, so that'll be a good event. And then we've got another, what, like another like kids race. Okay. Like, I'm not actually sure when that is to be fair. And that's aimed at like eight to 15 year olds. It's, and that's with um, a guy called Malk who, who runs that. Um, they did that, actually did that last year when we were shut, because mm -hmm. it's, it's quite, um, it was quite a sm small event, or, or not small, but not that many r riders. Sure. But this year, I think there's a few coming, and it's you know, like I say, it's aimed at the young, young crowd. Yeah, so, nice. So that's a good thing. Um, we've got um, an event with the fifty to one lot, which is we're calling it like the su summer session. So nice. it's in, that's in the middle of August. Um, ticket you can buy get tickets i think there's a few left still on on our website um and that's basically going to be like a, a day evening of riding so it's 12 i think it's 12 till nine well because we're going for it's, it's the idea come from like i've just said oh we're at top of hill yeah yeah and i'm like and it to be fair it was middle of winter but it was a nice day <laughs> <laughs> and the su and you know the sun was low three o'clock in the afternoon yeah we were like <laughs> half two or whatever <laughs> for that 10 minutes the yeah. sun came out over winter and i was just like i was up top i can't remember what i was doing and suddenly i was like oh my god imagine this in middle of summer yeah yeah if you had nice you know perfect summer's evening red sky you know session at top of hill yeah. so that's how the idea started and then but the day will run that we kind of it's not just based on 50 to one line it's going to be you know a couple of like sessions around different parts of the hill with the guys yeah. um but anyone can really ride what they want that day and then in the evening we're gonna kind of base it more at the top of the hill so you know like what you've been riding it'll be mm. that kind of stuff you can ride but there'll be like music and um uh, one of my mates scotty 
who's got a catering business called Roll with it. He's coming to do the food for it. Brilliant. Um, Loose Dogs sorting some DJ mates and sound system. There's um oh god this bike company. Oh god, I can't remember the names. Let me just look because I wouldn't mind saying this. I don't fully understand it, but they get like bikes and do them all. Okay. And kind of pass them on. To Smiling them. chain link. Yeah. Okay. Give them a follow. And they're kind of like passing stuff on to like people, to, to encourage people to ride and okay. stuff. Okay, yeah. So it's, it's a good thing, 50 to 1 lot of riding to it. And Park opens 11th of July yeah. until the 22nd of September. Yeah. £15 for a day pass. Yeah. £75 for a season pass. Yeah. Bargain. I reckon. Yeah. I reckon, yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, I, I do. I always try and think of everything like... What would I do just as a ride, like a rider who yep. had nothing to do with this place? Yep. I've, I've always through the whole thing tried to look at things like that. Mm. And with this, I'm like, you know, come and ride some of this stuff, 15 quid, and it's all right, isn't it? Right. Fair I mean, enough, you ain't got an uplift, but you're not paying for it. Honestly, so. on the e-bike today, just spending an hour or so up there, I felt yeah. like I got my 15 quid's and worth I think, just then. I think like this, this hill is like, I mean, it's obviously special to me. I've spent so much time here, but everyone just seems to love being on this hill. Yeah. They just, I don't know why, they just do. And it, I don't think that's 100% down to just riding your bike. Sure. Like, you know, I think about like some of the best times I've had on that hill. And it's not, and the things that I remember, it's not actually like, like riding it's like you're with your mates you're up there you're having a good laugh like you're out of not the norm do you know what i mean and it's yeah. you know the riding's good you know what i mean like there's sick riding to be had on this hill but there's yeah. more more happens here than just that i feel yeah and after reading the hundreds of messages that we got sent i do believe that now so. i agree well i mean what you've created here it what was it 10 years ago when you first started longer than that yeah um, well about 12 well, i've been digging on here about 12 years 12 years ago and then seeing it coming back is like a breath of fresh air and yeah. i think so many people are absolutely delighted the yeah. fact that it's coming back i hope you know i hope people come i hope they I, you know they come and support us because the support we really do I don't like ever asking for anything. I literally, but <laughs> if there was ever time I needed to ask for anything, it was would be for people to come and support us and ride sure. because the money that we take now is gonna is what we will use to rebuild this place. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we need to earn some money to like keep going. Like, yeah. like I say, we're financially struggling, but we need a way. The way out of it is the only way I know how to get out of anything is to bloody build build and dig my way out of it mm. so you know I need to carry on digging and digging as for non-stop for the next 10 years really keep it going but I can't we need to be able to earn some money I can't actually do it for nothing anymore because yeah. I've got mortgages and a kid and stuff do you know what I mean so if I can't if we can't earn any money out of this I've got to go somewhere else and earn some money which then slows down that process yeah you know, like before we, you know, the money used to come from the uplift and, you know, there was enough to, to keep that ball rolling, if you know what I mean, so. Yeah. Well, and hopefully if the powers that be don't get in the way, then yeah. this place can expand. Well, and... you know, if the power, yeah, if they don't and they allow us to, you know, move along with this, you know, this place is going to be here forever. Yeah. If, if they don't, we don't know. <laughs> Well, I, so. I, looking at it from the outside and just spending the day here, I can already see that you've got something very special and it's going to be, I think it's going to be a really good summer. Cool. And, and do you know Thanks another thing that. I think is that whether or not you see a lot of bookings now, I think people are going to book last minute because yeah. it's not like they need to cram onto an uplift. I know. We, th we've, yeah, definitely. Mate. We've talked about that. You know, before it was the uplift you needed to sometime book so 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 in advance you did yeah whereas now it's it's a complete new business model sure it's completely different so it's trying to look at it in that different way when we're so <laughs> used to something is um but i'm just trying to keep my eyes open just crack on digging well and sooner or later july the 
what is it, 11th? Yes, July around. 11th, there you go. And we're open, <laughs> so, and we, see, and we see what happens. Yeah. Well, seeing what you've done as well on the digger, like, I can't believe what the shapes you can sculpt without even getting a, a yeah, shovel out. Yeah, nice one. It's quite impressive. Yeah. Well, you know, like, same with anything in life, isn't it? If you put enough time into something, yeah. you get pretty good at it don't you practice makes perfect and right? i've spent a lot of time digging so <laughs> especially in like that machine so well that's that's awesome um thank you james yeah. for showing us around cheers and, mate i uh, appreciate you coming can't wait to ride properly yeah yeah well, i've it? taken up enough of your time it's the 24th of may so you better get moving <laughs> yeah well i'm i'm, go I'm off to anglesey now <laughs> I'm, I'm actually going fishing I'm actually doesn't leave in the digger now <laughs> and i'm off to anglesey for three days with um my missus and finn my lad so you've got to enjoy yourself yeah that's the one thing i honestly worked out mate i'm like if you don't make the time for yeah. yourself yeah Work life, it, balance. Yeah. work life balance yeah. yeah right nice one all right well i'll give you this back innit? if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe on the way out and look out for more episodes of the emcb podcast coming very soon